This story is from the SCOTUS blog, the Supreme Court of the United States. They had a late night ruling last night that is uh, basically precluding a an execution from taking place. This article came from Amy Howe, and the document is titled, Court Won't Allow an Alabama Execution Without a Pastor. And so we're going to go through this late night opinion that came out very late last night. It's actually an interesting case. Let's go back to the article. It says, on Thursday night, the Supreme Court ruled that an execution of an Alabama man must remain on hold. Unless the state allows the man, Willie Smith III, to have his pastor by his side in the execution chamber. The justices rejected a request by the state to undo a ruling by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, which had blocked the state from executing Smith. So it sounds like Willie Smith is on death row and he is being scheduled to be executed. He wants his pastor to be there with him when they go into the uh, the execution chamber. And Apparently, it sounds like in Alabama, that was not allowed, and there is some some uh, interesting history there. So it's not allowed. He appeals up to the 11th Circuit. The 11th Circuit, which is the Court of Appeals for the Alabama state, they say, we are uh, we, we actually agree with your appeal. We're not going to let them execute you without your pastor being there. So the 11th Circuit is also foregoing, it's, it's putting the execution on hold. So the state of Alabama then, the government, appeals up to the Supreme Court. Now they're both arguing about whether or not this execution should go forward without a pastor, without a spiritual person there. And so Smith, so we just have some context here. They, uh, he, was a, he was sentenced to death in 1991 for a robbery, a shooting death of a 22-year-old person named Sharma Johnson in Birmingham, Alabama. So we'll talk about the the law there, how the justices are holding in a minute, but a little bit of backstory here. So apparently in Alabama, the way that this worked is some time ago, I don't have the dates in mind, but in a different era in Alabama, they had some rules on the books that said, if you were on death row, if you were going to be executed, then you would get a pastor to come with you, but it had to be a Christian pastor who was hired to work at the prison by the state. Okay. And so they had a position for that. They had a Christian pastor, somebody who helped death row inmates, right? Or other people. And this was an employee for the state government. And so what ended up happening, of course, you can see how that can get messy. Now you've got sort of a commingling between a you know, religion and the government. That's, a, of course, a big no-no, separation of church and state and all those concepts. So what they did in Alabama or what a different actual inmate did, somebody who was also on death row, is they said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm Buddhist. So I want a Buddhist whatever practitioner in there with me when I go in. You have a Christian person, but I'm Buddhist. I don't want your Christian pastor. And so they were challenging that. And so what Alabama did is they just said, all right, that's fine. You, you don't get a pastor at all then. No pastors at all. I think they I think they sort of modified it a little bit over time. They added a Muslim person, you know, a Muslim uh, pastor, whatever the, the proper vernacular is for that. And they allowed that. And then the Buddhist said, well, I still don't have mine. And so they just said, all right, enough of this already. Nope, nobody gets any pastors. And now this guy says, well, I want my pastor in there. So let's take a look at what the judges have to say about this. Four justices, Justice Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, and Amy Coney Barrett. What? One of these things just doesn't belong here. That's because Stephen Breyer, Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan are all on the left wing of the court, and Amy Coney Barrett is on the right wing of the court, apparently. So what is Amy Coney Barrett doing with these left wing judges? Well, let's see if we can piece some of this together. All signed an opinion that was ultimately written by Kagan that said the state failed to adequately justify its policy of barring spiritual advisors from the execution chamber. In other words, the state can't justify that not having a pastor there is is worth it, that it serves a legitimate government interest. Three justices, so the Chief Justice John Roberts, Justice Thomas, and Brett Kavanaugh, they indicated that they would have allowed the election to go forward under Alabama's policy. And then we have two unknowns, Judge Alito and Judge Gorsuch. They did not publicly disclose how they voted, but at least one of them must have voted with the three liberal justices and Barrett in order to prevent the execution from occurring without a spiritual advisor. And so right now you've got... You've got four who are affirmatively in the majority. We know who they are. And you have to have another person in there to make it five. So you have a sort of a five, five, three for sure. Could have been a six, three, or could have been a five, four. We don't know because uh, two judges, Alito and Gorsuch, haven't told us how they voted. And this is allowed in this type of a proceeding. This is a, um, I forget what they call it, sort of like a, a um, uh, the words on the tip of my tongue, but it's like a, it's a, it's a very quick proceeding because it's an emergency type of 
uh, endeavor. Uh, what's happening in Alabama required an instant response late last night because the execution was forthcoming. So, uh, so we don't know how, how they voted, but we do have the opinion that we can read through. So let's take a look at it. As mentioned previously, these were the judges who voted in the majority, so they are responsible for this opinion. Justice Thomas is not on this list because he would have granted the application. So he would have uh, allowed the execution to go forward. The application here is the government asking that the Supreme Court grant an injunction and demand the, the the lower circuit court remove the requirement that they allow the pastor in. So it's sort of layers on other layers. But Justice Thomas is not in this box. This box here could have been Alito or Gorsuch. We just don't know who it was. So as we can see here, it's Alabama versus Smith. And this is on the application to vacate the injunction. Thomas would have granted the vacate the order to vacate the injunction. And then we have Kagan over here. We've got Breyer, we've got Sotomayor, and we have Amy Coney Barrett, and we have our mystery person. They're concurring in the denial of the application to vacate the injunction. So there's, there's the language for it. And so let's go through this. It's not a long piece, and these are actually pretty quick to read because a lot of it's sort of a case law and citations that you can just skip over. Willie Smith, he's sentenced to death. His last wish is to have his pastor with him as he dies. The Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, applying a statute that was designed to protect a prisoner's religious rights, required Alabama to honor that request. I concur in the court's decision to leave that order in place, and I write to explain why. Alabama has not carried its burden of showing that the exclusion of all clergy members from the execution chambers is necessary to ensure prison security. So you got to see a relationship there between what the government is claiming they're doing this for, allegedly it's prison security, and they're saying that they have in order to, to ensure prison security, we got to make sure we don't let a pastor in the execution chamber. I think right off the top, you think that doesn't make much sense, right? It doesn't sound like it passes the gut test a little bit. So the state can now ex cannot now execute Smith without his pastor present to ease what Smith calls, quote, the transition between the worlds of the living and the dead, right? Which is, which is pretty profound. The governing law sets a high bar for Alabama to clear. There's a, uh, an act called the Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Persons Act, which provides expansive protection for prisoners' religious liberties, which is a good thing. Under that statute, a prison may not, quote, impose a substantial burden on a, pr on a, re a prisoner's religious exercise unless doing so satisfies our strict scrutiny test which is a very high test. It's sort of the highest threshold that we have for government laws. The challenged policy must be, quote, this is the strict scrutiny test, the least restrictive means of furthering a compelling governmental interest. So you would just do your analysis on that. What is the compelling governmental interest? Well, according to the government, it's prison security. And what's the least restrictive means of furthering prison security? Well, according to them, it's not allowing a pastor into the government, in, in, into the execution building. So part of the analysis, is there any other way that they can make sure the prison is secure that allows a, a prisoner to have their spiritual advisor with them as they die? Probably, right? I think we could probably come up with something. Let's see what the court says. That, I'm sorry, if any less restrictive means is available for the government to achieve its goals, then the government must use it. So, so is, there any, is there anything else that the government can do to make sure that the place is secure while they have a pastor joining in? I think so. It goes on, Alabama's policy substantially burdens Smith's exercise of religion, right? He doesn't have a pastor when he dies. That's a big deal. The state bars all clergy member from the execution chamber, leaving inmates to die without spiritual attendance. But Smith understands his minister presence as integral to his faith and essential to his spiritual search for redemption. His pastor, his pastor Smith says, will not only relieve his struggles as he passes, but also help him properly express to God his repentance. The sincerity of those religious beliefs is not in doubt. Alabama acknowledges that Smith's request is, quote, based on a religious belief and not some other motivation. So, you know, they're, they're, they're believing him. Brief for the dependent. Uh, so they, they cite some law. Alabama's policy must withstand strict scrutiny. So, again, what is that standard? The least restrictive means of furthering a compelling government interest. And they say the court says it cannot. Prison security is, of course, compelling, but past practice in Alabama and elsewhere shows that a prison may ensure security without barring all clergy members from the chamber. Until two years ago, Alabama required the presence of a prison chaplain at an inmate site. It gave up the practice only when the court barred states from providing spiritual advisors of just one faith. So once they had to include other faiths, they just stopped doing it. Still more relevant, other jurisdictions have allowed clergy members with no connection to the government to attend an inmate execution. In the last year, 
The, gov the federal government has conducted more than 10 executions attended by the prisoner's clergy of choice in exactly what Smith requests. Some states have chosen to follow the same practice. Nowhere, as far as I can tell, has the presence of a clergy member, whether state appointed or independent, disturbed an execution that records suggest that Alabama could satisfy its security concerns through a means less restrictive than the current prohibition. And so they make the argument that that needs to happen. The state, however, is arguing differently. They're saying Alabama, the state, you know, why, why can't they have a pastor in there? They're saying they need to close the execution chamber to all but those whom the warden has found, quote, trustworthy. That does not justify the state's bar, according to the court. Alabama can take any number of measures to ensure that a clergy member will act responsibly during an execution. The state can do a background check. It can interview him. It can talk to his associates. It can seek a penalty-backed pledge that he will obey the rules. What the state cannot do, however, consistent with the strict scrutiny standard, is simply presume that every clergy member will be untrustworthy or otherwise said that only the harshest restriction can work. Relatedly, Alabama also says disturbances have arisen around executions in the past, but its two examples concern close family members of inmates, not pastors. The state cannot jump from dissimilar incidents to a conclusion that even well-vetted clergy members risk disrupting an execution. Again, the state fails to recognize the law places a heightened duty on prison officials to demonstrate, not just assume, that a plausible, least restrictive alternative would be ineffective, where their preferred approach burns religions for these reasons. The 11th Circuit was right to bar Alabama from executing Smith without his pastor. By his side, the law guarantees Smith the right to practice his faith free from unnecessary interference, including at the moment the state puts him to death. Interesting. Interesting, 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 right? This is sort of a religious protection opinion coming from the left wing of the court. And the conservatives are not there. The conservatives are, well, one of them is there. We don't know who that is. Could be Gorsuch or Alito. But Amy Coney Barrett, as we all know, very, very strong Catholic. She's joining in on that, saying, yeah, pastors should be there. So Breyer, so are Sotomayor, so is Kagan. And somebody else. Now, what do the conservative people say about this? This is interesting, right? Normally the conservatives are, are thought to be the protector of religious freedoms. But they're on the other side here. They're saying Willie Smith should have been executed. Let's take a look at who is on that side. The Supreme Court of the United States. This is Judge Kavanaugh dissenting. Judge Kavanaugh is right here. You also have Thomas, who's not a, not a part of this dissenting opinion, but we saw from the very front, from the very first part that he said here, he would just vac he would just grant it. Okay, he would just grant the application. He didn't write anything about it. He just says, yep, I just grant it. So we're going to put him on the pro-execution side along with the conservative judges. And here it says, Justice Kavanaugh, with whom the Chief Justice joins, dissenting in the denial of the application to vacate. This is a short opinion, so we'll just go through it quickly. In 1991, Willie Smith murdered Sharma Ruth Johnson. The execution was scheduled for tonight. Smith asked to have his spiritual advisor in the execution room. Alabama said no under its policy of excluding all spiritual advisors from the execution room as distinct from the viewing room. The 11th Circuit enjoined the execution, stopping the execution, stating that the state's policy likely violates the law. Because the state's policy is non-discriminatory and, in my view, serves the state's compelling interest in ensuring the safety, security, and solemn, solemnity, solemn, solemnity, I don't know how to say that word, of the execution room, I would have granted the state's application to vacate the injunction respecting okay but the court has different view and denies the state's application given the states of execution here and in another case it appears that the state to, it appears that states that want to avoid months or years of litigation delays issue they should figure out a way to allow spiritual advisors into the into the execution room as other states and the federal government has done doing so not only would satisfy the inmates request but would also avoid still further delays and bring long overdue closure for victims families so, uh, so it sounds like he's not opposed to allowing it to happen. He's just saying the state, in, in, other, in other words, Alabama should probably go back and look at this thing again. But in this case, it's okay. We'll, we, would just, we would allow it because it's already been going on for a long time. This happened back in 1991. The family needs some closure. And we don't, you know, they have a system in place that is already not biased. Okay. It's a, it's, it, you, you may disagree with the rule. According to this opinion, you may disagree that there should be no pastors in the room with you when you pass or with that person when they pass, but it's applied uniformly, right? It's not just Christians. It's not just Muslims or Buddhists. It's everybody. 
Nobody gets one. And so they're saying, well, that, that serves a pretty compelling interest. It does ensure the safety, does ensure the security, does ensure the solemnity <laughs> of the execution room. So uh, I'm going to look that word up as soon as I'm done here. All right. So um, we are, so who, where did they vote? Who voted where? Here we've got uh, Judge Gorsuch and we have Alito. We really don't know who voted with whom, but they are, uh, they, they could have split it. One could have been with the majority and one could have been with the minority and uh, one, uh, or they both could have been in the majority. We just don't know, but we know one of them joined in on it. If I had to guess, if I had to take a stab at it, I would say that Gorsuch voted with the majority to stop the execution and Alito didn't. What do you think about that? 